In northern Burma, on the road to China, is the strategic Jap-held city of Michinaw. Two miles to its south is Michinaw Airstrip, key to the capture of this stronghold. United States transports and gliders head for the field taken just hours before by Chinese and American troops. Aboard these big ships, Chinese reinforcements and American airborne engineers ride together with tractors and other air base equipment. Below is the rough shell and bomb park Michinaw Strip, still under enemy fire, where the heavily loaded gliders must land. Watch this glider. Coming in fast and low, it heads for what appears to be an unavoidable collision on the closely packed field. The gliders unload. Some of these troops will stay to guard and recondition the airstrip, but most will push on to take the city of Michinaw. Uncle Joe's chariot brings General Joseph W. Stilwell to the field. He confers with General Frank Merrill, whose marauders took the Michinaw Strip after an epic 25-day mountain march through Jap Line. Our planes, some of them wrecked in landing, dot the airbase. Jap opposition continues from the air. An enemy plane comes over to attack the field. In the jungle, Lieutenant Colonel Seagrave, famed Burma surgeon, has set up a hospital. He operates on casualties while our fighters provide cover overhead. Michinaw Airstrip is an important stop on the air supply route to China, thanks to American and Chinese soldiers fighting in hot, insect-ridden swamps and jungles. It is now in Allied hands. <laughs> American service women, having completed a period of active service in Italy, see ancient Egypt while en route to duty in the Middle East. At a canteen established by the Cairo Police Department, they find a bit of home. Like thousands of tourists before them, these American army women visit the Sphinx and the pyramids. On July 3rd, General Dwight D. Eisenhower, Supreme Allied Invasion Commander, once more visits American troops in Normandy. With Lieutenant General Omar Bradley, United States Ground Commander, and Major Witch of the 79th Division, he tours units and division commands. Eisenhower journeys to talk with Major General Lightning Joe Collins on the outskirts of Cherbourg. Next day, shells are stacked high. At exactly noon, in observance of July 4th, America's Independence Day, every United States gun in Normandy will send a shell crashing into the enemy. General Bradley will fire one of the long toms. of Grand Con les Bains, liberated Frenchmen join in celebrating America's Day of Independence. The Stars and Stripes and the French Tricolor go up side by side. Trained by their schoolmaster, the children of the village join in singing America.
Saipan Island in the Marianas, great Jap stronghold just 1,500 miles southeast of Tokyo. Here, American carrier-based planes land at recently captured Aslito Airstrip, now renamed Conroy Field. For three and a half weeks, planes, ships, guns, and men have fought fiercely in the greatest land battle of the Pacific theater to date. The carrier planes gas up for action. Nearing the final stages of the campaign, fighters and bombers take off to smash the Japs in the northern tip of the 75 square mile island. Smoke billows from a Jap ammunition dump hit by our bombs. On Hill 500, north of Conroy Field, Lieutenant Colonel Evans Carlson, famed Marine Raider commander, sees the progress of the battle as United States mechanized equipment and men move up in force against the enemy. Marine and Army divisions, backed up by Vice Admiral Mark Mitcher's Task Force 58, must complete the annihilation of 20,000 Japanese troops on Saipan. shells to be dumped on deeply entrenched Japs, fighting back from pillboxes and steel-doored caves on the island. hit on a Jap cave as relentlessly United States guns clear the path for our advancing forces. In the battle for Saipan, 2,360 Americans were killed. For the Japs, there were 19,000 dead in this action. of Saipan, the Allies are now within 2,000 miles of Tokyo, the Philippines, and Formosa. <music> Typical of the Marines and soldiers who won one of the war's great victories at Saipan, these Yanks have demonstrated once again that as individuals and as combat units, they are more than a match for the Japs. <laughs> 